Today you see a special woven dress. I've gone the extra mile and done all the things so that it turns out amazing, something I'm absolutely proud of. Look at this neckline. Keep watching. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. And today I'm very excited to share with you a dress I've made a couple of weeks ago. It is a pattern I've made in the past, but in a different view, in a different size a couple of years ago. And it's always at the back of my mind to come back to patterns I have liked in the past and just want to make them again but in a different way. I'm talking about a super popular pattern it's the fringe blouse and dress. This is a pattern that's been around for a couple of years already probably since 2018 maybe and at first it came from sizes 0 to 18. In 2019 it was updated to include up to sizes 24 and I was part of that pattern test. In that opportunity there were some cup size options added so instead of just having a big cup bodice as the original had a CD cup size bodice was also available for all the sizes so that is amazing that's when I made two versions in 2019 about two years ago this is when I made this one I already have a pattern review of my previous versions on the channel in that opportunity I just basically showed them to you like a sew and tell I didn't film any sewing back then I just showed you them. I always knew I wanted to return to it and film some things for you. I think there's a lot to see in this pattern. A lot of little extra details that you can apply to have an amazing result and that's what I've done with my current version that I'm sharing with you today. Some sewing in this one. I didn't show the sewing in the past. The fringe blouse and dress is designed for woven fabrics. There are two bodice options. The difference between them is the way the neckline finishes. One of them is just pulled over your head and it's got a lovely notched shaped collar on that bodice. The bodice has a center front seam. The other option has the crossover and buttons like this one that I've got on right there. So this is view A and it's the one I've sewn in the past. I've made two versions of this one already, but I hadn't sewn view B which was the notch collar I found it amazing and I knew I always wanted to come back and sew that one. They all have waist starts in the front and the back and depends if you choose the A B cut bodice you won't have side bust starts but if you choose the C and D you will have them. I've chosen the C and D so I have side bust starts there. The bodice hits at the waist and then below that comes a peplum or a skirt. It is the same pattern piece it's just that you cut the skirt shorter if you're doing the blouse and that's what I've done in the past. I'm doing the dress now and the hem of this dress is curved, longer in the front, shorter on the sides. And what I mostly like about this pattern is the amount of gathers here on the skirt piece. It's very mild, very slight. You know, it'll give you enough room for the hips and everything, but it's not gonna give you that poofy look on the front. I don't enjoy the ones that are very gathered. In my opinion, the ones that are just extremely gathered look a bit juvenile, like something a little girl would wear. Just because I've been sewing little girl dresses and they seem to be extremely gathered there at the waist so that the skirt really poofs out. It's not the case for this one. I think the drafting was done very clever in the way that it's going to look good on everyone. It's not going to look bulky or poofy. You can sew optional ties that you can encase into the darts, the front or the back, and they can tie at the back. That's optional. You need light to medium weight wovens. When I make these little graphics, I try to classify the fabrics I've shown there into flowy and more structured. And you know, if you know how I like to sew and how I like to dress, you know that I favor the flowy looks most of the time, especially for a design like this with a gathered skirt. So my favorites are all the rayon types, rayon blends, crepe. A very nice one for this would be a, a linen rayon blend. That's beautiful. And if you want a more structured look, you have so many other options, cotton lawn, cotton wow double gauze, shirting, chambray, if you want to go that route. Not my favorites, I wouldn't choose any of them because that's just my own preference. Although those ones are very easy to work with, easier to work with than rayon and crepe and all that. It's just a personal preference, you can choose. They are all going to work. They're just going to look a little bit different. I always like my skirts to look really flowy. That's why I tend not to do gathered skirts in fabrics that are structured. Some of these might be very lightweight, like cotton voile is very lightweight, but it's not flowy, it's not drapey. It will have a bit more structure, even though it is very lightweight. I'll show you a close up of my fabric. This is the right side of the fabric. It's 100% rayon with a linen look. It's got a very interesting print. I will need to match these prints on the sides. Not the prints as such, but there are areas with white print and areas with more navy. 
So those are things to take into account when you choose fabrics like that. And then on the wrong side, I'm showing you how the texture of this fabric looks. It looks like it's linen. It's actually sold as a linen look rayon and I'm so happy I found it. It's beautiful. It's a little heavier than just lightweight 100% rayon. Although this is 100% rayon, the way it's weaved, it's so nice, very nice to work with. Very stretches out, all those things, but just the feel of it is a little, little heavier. I would say it's a medium weight fabric. Very beautiful. As I mentioned, the pattern was updated last year to include the full size range up to 30. So it'll go up to a bust of 58 and a hip of 59. Now this design is not super oversized. It's not fitted either. I think the ease drafted into this is perfect. You have about three inches of positive ease around the bust, about two at the waist and then about 10 at the hips. So very nice. It's not gonna look like you're wearing a sack that is shapeless. It has all the shaping with the darts. It's just a very well-fitting bodice and you might need to do some fitting adjustments to fit you. I'll just show you quickly what this one looks like. This is the one I made two years ago. It is a size 14 with a CD cut bodice. So it is a little bit more fitted at the waist than what I would like. I can still wear this perfectly, but I have gained the size from two years ago. So the one I plan to make now is a size 16. I reprinted my whole pattern. But here you can see the blouse version, curved seam, the waist hits, the waist seam hits my waist and then we have slight gathers there. And this is the one with the buttons down the front. Same dolman sleeves with a cuff on the end. Very nice. But for this one, I cut a size larger to fit my shape now. I just need a little bit extra room in there. There's lots of seeing up close and so personal, flat measurements, some minor fitting adjustments that I've done just based on flat pattern measurements. I did not make a muslin for this bodice. And some little extra things that you're not going to see anywhere else, just things that I do that make a huge difference to how the garment looks. And it's got to do with cutting, with interfacing. Very helpful tips that you might want to apply to other projects that you're doing that are similar to this. And also, you just get a whole overview of the pattern. Let's see. Don't you think this is starting to wear me? You've been raided down like hail. This is the front bodice for view B, the one that has the notched type of facing. You can see the facing shape right there. And I have drawn a few lines here just to make a few basic fitting adjustments. On the top, I drew the 3.8 seam allowance. That is the seam allowance that the pattern uses. Just from about there, I measured down. This would be the nape of my neck, the highest point of my neck at the shoulder slope. And I just measured down. And this is my apex here. The pattern has a little cross there that says bus point for reference. I think it's awesome that it's marked on the pattern because it, it lets you know where it's been drafted on this specific pattern. When I measured down, mine is down there. It's exactly an inch lower. So I've drawn a line across to meet there, just to have the reference there. Now this dart is slightly angled and I've drawn a green rectangle. I hope you can see it here, just straight. This part of the rectangle meets the tip of the dart and then the bottom of the dart leg there matches that rectangle. All I need to do is cut this rectangle out. After cutting this dart out in this rectangle, I need to match the tip of the dart to my bust point. That's why you see that line right there. And it's just very easy, just align it. It's super handy to have your cutting mat underneath. It always helps me a lot because I can align what I cut there. And then I can tape it down nice and accurately. Actually, this is a tad less than an inch. I then have to go ahead and fill this gap in with paper so that I can have a completed pattern piece. So that is the side bust dart sorted. I have sorted it so that when I sew it, this actually will be at my bust height and not higher. When you sew a dart that's too high, it just messes up the whole feet of the front. You can see where my bust point is and where the tip of this dart is. And it's just way too close for comfort. I think it's about three quarters of an inch distance. And I like mine to be a little over an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter at the closest. Consider that the bust is round, so there will be part of the bust right there anyway. From the tip of this dart, I just backed it out by three eighths of an inch right there. So that is my new dart 
point and there I just blended into the lines I haven't change the width of the dot or anything I just made it slightly shorter it doesn't really change much but it will make a difference to the way that my top will fit one other flat pattern measurement I did was measure from there discounting the seam allowance and just measuring the length here to make sure it is actually going to be at my waist and it is I am short waisted so generally bodices fit me okay sometimes I need to even shorten them Sometimes I have to lengthen them. In this case, I don't really need to change the front at all. Bodice piece, the back bodice also has a waist start there. I won't manipulate that. I don't really need to. I don't have a bust at the back. One thing I did check is the waist length at the back. So drew my seam allowance there, measured down there, and I find that this bodice is 3 8 of an inch too long. And I need to adjust that. I don't want to adjust the whole thing because this side seam needs to match my front and the length of my front is okay. At the short and lengthen line, I drew my seam allowance there on the side, that's 3 8 And I cut all the way across, but just up to this line, so not right up to the edge. What you can also do here is cut into this little hinge point so that it can move better. This is the way that you adjust things without altering this total length of the seam. So here I drew a line at 3 8 and all I'm going to do is overlap this, this in the center. So let's call this a type of sway back adjustment, minor. And I usually do need things to be shorter in the center back. And I do have a short torso and I really don't want my bodice to be long on the back. That never looks good. So I'm just going to put a piece of tape there and I have just shortened it in the center back but not on the side seam. Very minor adjustment but it will make a difference to the way that everything fits. The dart might look a little bit wonky now, I'll just straighten it out and fix it. Straighten out this line there that got a bit crooked and on the other side as well. So those are the only minor adjustments, dropping the side bust dart, shortening the waist dart leaving this waist dart the same just fixing it after doing this little hinge right there that does not affect the side seam it just shortened my body slightly in the center back where i need it to be a little bit shorter to fit my body and that's it i'm confident the bodice will fit this is the facing piece it matches exactly the shape of the front but you can see that the front piece has an excess there because the front bodice has a seam and the facing is cut on the fold so you can see there it says center front fold. So the facing is cut on the fold, but the front bodice is not, it has a seam. The thing about cutting a facing piece like that on the fold is I find it a little bit inaccurate. I think sometimes you get excess there on the fold and this ends up being wider than what you want it to be. So I will create a pattern piece that replicates this on the fold. So I have the other half of that and I can cut it as just one piece. I think it will be more accurate that way. Oh, but you can this is the edge of my fabric right on the top here and here are the two selvages together i do want to stabilize the center front of these two bodice pieces there will be a seam in the middle i have some interfacing already placed on the top there but through there you can see the shape there that the neckline is going to have with the facing afterwards and i want to interface this maybe three quarters of an inch beyond that shape there I don't want to keep the same shape, I don't need to, that's going to be hidden with the facing but I do want there to be a piece of interfacing on that section and down the center front so I'm going to interface all this piece here maybe you can see a line, I'll just pull this back and show you I've drawn a blue line there, that's how much I want there to be interfacing on this section so I can see that through my interfacing. My interfacing is very lightweight and sort of see-through, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut through there. This doesn't need to be too exact because it will be covered by the facing piece. This looks a little bit crazy, but I'll just remove that. This is the piece of interfacing that I'm going to fuse here on this side, and then take the other side and fuse it on the other end, on the other side of the selvage. When I've got this section already interfaced, then I'm going to place this on top and cut it out and that's how I make sure nothing's going to end up short or anything. I think I can't really avoid this fabric reacting to the interfacing. It is loosely woven. I know it will shrink a tiny amount and I'd rather that happen. 
it won't be perceptible, you won't really see it in the print or anything. But I'd rather that happen and then cut out this so that my fabric is actually the size of the pattern piece. I've placed my front bodice piece right against the selvage and if I lift this you will see that it's partially interfaced. So it's only a small section. I know there's a 3 8 seam allowance and I will be using up to the edge of the <laughs> selvage for that or else my skirt is not going to fit across the width. So I will be able to pull it off. What's important is that now I can cut this and a little section of the center will be interfaced and the rest won't and that's how I'm going to protect this against stretching and all of those things. I won't need to stay stitch this area. You can see that I've made whole pieces for the facing so that I don't have to cut them on the fold and I've interfaced this piece of fabric and then I'm going to cut it out now. This is the back facing and this is my front facing. This little bit will be a bit tricky to cut. I'll just be careful with my scissors to be really exact on that point there. Cutting out all the pattern pieces took deceptively longer than I was expecting. It was all about trying to match these prints on the sides. They are stripes. I mainly wanted to keep this sort of print there, the dark blue there. I wanted to match that sort of thing, although I'm not aiming to match the actual palm trees or things on the side. Doing the best that I can, it took a long time to be able to achieve that. So I've got the two skirt pieces there. They're both cut with the same pattern piece, both on the fold, very easy. Over here we have the bodice pieces. I also wanted to keep the type of print sort of matching across horizontally. So we have this navy area there match and this is my front facing i've cut it out it's already been interfaced before cutting it as you saw and there is my back facing this is the cuff i had to cut the cuff on the cross grain i had no other option and just to disguise the fact that it was on the cross grain because i didn't want to have sideways palm trees and stuff i was able to cut it mainly on navy blue section so I think I will pretty much hide the fact that this is on the cross grain um, in regards to what print is going to be shown. It will be mainly navy blue there on the cuff. And I think that will make a nice contrast there on the sleeves that have the white and the navy palm trees. Now for the tabs, because I want them to be seen and to be a highlight, I did cut them out where there was mainly white. I think you will see the nice contrast there, the cuff with the tabs. So you can see that I've taken into account tons of details to cut this out. If I had chosen a solid or a print that was just super busy and I didn't need to match anything, it would have taken way less time to do this. Also stabilizing these necklines, cutting the interfacing pieces, interfacing the fabric before cutting, you know, all these white sections that you see there and there. It's all extra time. I know these are extra steps, but they always do make a difference in how the garment looks in the end. This is my dress. It's very beautiful. It took me ages to cut and match everything. You can see that on the chest, we have the white print with palm trees and flowers. If you can see there's a little parrot there, I'm glad I didn't cut it in half or have half a parrot and I do have the whole head of the parrot there. That's something silly that was just <laughs> fortunate for it to happen. I was working on limited fabric and to cut my front bodice, I used up to the very selvage of the fabric. But that selvage area is within the seam allowance there. I could not match this. At the top here, it doesn't look bad, but I do have a flower that's cut there. I had no other option, a different way to place my pattern pieces, so I just had to go with that. That's okay, <laughs> can't all be that perfect. So we have navy there and I match that on both the front and the back so that this has the same type of design on the fabric. The back is cut on the fold so that's nice and easy. The darts are there, you can't see them. I love the darts. To sew this bodice you need to sew six darts, at least in the CD cut bodice. You have the two darts on the side that I lowered by an inch as you saw. And then you have the waist darts there, two on the front, two on the back six fun darts to sew. If you are sewing the AB cut bodice, then you just have waist darts and no darts on the side here. Dolman sleeve, super easy to sew. I've sewn the cuffs differently to the pattern instructions. Basically in the instructions, you sew the cuff on, on the flat and then you sew the side seams that includes the dolman sleeve and the cuff. I prefer to sew the bodice separately sew the cuff separately and then sew the cuff on the round on the reverse. 
I'll link a video about that below. I'm not going to go to depth into that. It's basically got to do with the way you top stitch the cuff on, that you top stitch it on the right side of the garment. Just my thing. It, it just works very nicely. <laughs> and then I have a little tab. The tab, you can put a buttonhole there and a button, but because I'm never going to remove this, I just sewed the button through all the layers and didn't sew a buttonhole. I'm very practical like that. If it's something that's not functional, like a buttonhole on the tab, I'm not going to sew it because it doesn't really serve me any purpose. And the button is gonna cover it anyway, so it's not even decorative, you know? Lovely skirt with the gathers there. You can see on the side seams, I have the white areas matching, then the navy. You know, these are really important things to think about if you buy fabric that has repeats like that. They're not stripes but they behave sort of like thick horizontal stripes. I have seen in ready to wear fabrics like this, where of course in factories, they're just gonna cut them out random. Nothing's gonna match on the sides. And I always think, why wouldn't they just try to match them just a little bit? It takes a little bit extra fabric, but it's totally doable. It totally makes the garment look so much better. Just, just a little bit more dedication into our sewing is also very nice for the way that you feel in them as well unless you really don't mind. But I really wouldn't have liked to have a white area here and then matching with a navy blue on the back and this not matching on the sides. It would have really disturbed me. Only because I have the time and I'm sewing at home and I know I can achieve nicer things and just go the extra mile and just, if it takes longer to cut, so be it. <laughs> I love the curved hem. I did a narrow hem, only 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Surge the edge, fold it up and top stitched, nothing special there. I generally see in pattern instructions that the hem allowances are larger, even in curved hems. So when I see that you have like a 5 8 hem allowance or an inch hem allowance, I just do a narrow hem, 3 8 it always looks so much better. And depending on the type of fabric, I've also been known to hem with a bias tape that acts like a facing and goes around the curve super nicely. I didn't think it was necessary in this case. I'll show you inside out because this is actually the start of the whole pattern, in my opinion. It's the most beautiful area. And I think the one that you should take the longest sewing and just being super careful. I love doing this facing and you would have seen sneak peeks of how I dealt with the facing on my V neckline tutorial for woven fabrics. I will leave that down in the description box. You can see how this V neckline was done because this bodice has a center front seam and the facing is cut on the fold. So there's something really special going on in the tip here. It's not part of the pattern instructions the way I've shown you, it's just the way I do it. So it's not like you're going to find that technique in the instructions for the fringe blouse and dress. If you wanna see how I do it, you can watch that video that's already on the channel. Otherwise, you have a facing that's shaped. It's got the, the same shape as a notched neckline right there. Whenever you need to fold in a raw area of facings and it tells you to fold in by a certain amount, in this case, a quarter of an inch, I just don't do it by eyeballing. I like to sew a guide stitch all around and I'll just do a long stitch length, something easy to remove later, go all the way around. I like to use my quarter inch foot for that. Once that guide stitch is there, it's very easy to press in super accurately to have that same seam allowance pressed in. You have areas here that are concave in shape, so it's really important to snip into there a little bit before folding in to relieve the tension that the seam allowance is going to form underneath. If you don't snip into there, you end up with a really tight area that's going to pull when you top stitch your facing down in the end result. So snipping into there, very important as well. These little corners right here, when you have that intersection of seams, I don't snip diagonally to get rid of bulk. I just fold that onto itself and flip it right sides out. It's much more stable. I don't weaken that corner area and it works really well. And if you've been following along and know how I like to sew, you know I wouldn't have just pinned this on and sewn it on. <laughs> no way. I went the extra mile of stretching my whole bodice Side seams aren't sewn at this stage. I put it on my pressing board because I can have a really good view. And it's a taller ironing board, it's better for my back. <laughs> and when I laid it flat, I pinned it all the way around, very flat without moving anything. And then I put it flat on my table where I sew and I hand basted that flat. So I never had the garment on my lap, like sewing it in the air. So that's when your fabric moves and shifts around. Once that was hand basted on, then it was a whiz, very easy to just edge stitch and sew on the edge everywhere from the wrong side up, all around the edge, all the way up to the bottom. 
Now, if I'd done this in a solid, you would really see the top stitching on the right side of the garment. You might see some top stitching there partially on the white areas, but otherwise you won't really see it. But when I wear it, it's flat, it's cut, all the raw edges are enclosed, everything is really beautiful. And then when I look at this facing inside that goes all the way down to the bodice, like that, I think, you know, I want to sew this again and sew the facings on the reverse so that you can see the facing on this side. Wouldn't it be cool to have a contrast fabric or maybe just the same fabric but embroider it and then put it on the gap? I don't know. I got so many ideas after doing this and seeing this on the wrong side, how pretty it looks. So that is something that I would definitely explore. When you sew a facing on reverse, it's the exact same technique. You just do it to the other side. So you sew it from the inside and then you flip it to the outside. But all the rest is the same, folding it in. All the steps I would do in the exact same way and it would be really pretty. It's another option I would love to try. I'm very, very happy with this dress. I can see it matching my light brown shoes, tan colored shoes, the ones that match my skin color, with navy shoes, with red. I don't know, I just love these colors and I love how this looks and feels. Feels amazing, let's see it on. My newest fringe dress, size 16. I made some adjustments to the bodice, just lowering a side buster and a minor sway back adjustment. Also, the dart under the bust, I shortened it a little bit just to match my body better. Otherwise, it's really good. The bodice hits right at my waist. And then I have the little skirt. I hadn't made a dress before, I just made the blouses. So I'm very happy I did this. I really like the curved hem and this is the original length of the dress higher in the side longer in the front with a curve the waist on the bodice has a bit of positive ease it's not super tight it's not super loose you can choose to put ties here uh, and insert them in this dart or the back dart i didn't have fabric to do the ties and look at this fabric it's so pretty it took me a long time to try to match the type of print on here the, the lighter colors and then the navy and then the lighter at the bottom and for that to match on the sides as well, took ages. <laughs> Very worth it though. You can see that the gathering on this skirt piece is not excessive. You know, it's not a lot. It doesn't give you bulk over the tummy. It just skims over it. The back as well, very slight gathering. I really like that about this dress, that it's not poofy. And it helps that this fabric also is super drapey and it hangs really nicely. Here you can see this beautiful neckline. I've chosen this option with a notched neckline. There's the other option that crosses over with buttons. I've done those before, but now I've, I made this view. Very pretty. There is a center seam there. I could not match that. It was impossible with my fabric, with the amount of fabric I had. So that's it. There is a facing inside that's been top stitched super neatly. And the facing goes all the way down to the bottom of the bodice. It doesn't just stop there or something. It involves the whole thing. Very neatly top stitched got under stitching inside I love how this turned out nice and flat beautiful in my opinion all the extra steps very worth it at the end of the sleeves I have a cuff I was able to cut the cuffs that go at the bottom of the dolman sleeves from navy sections of the fabric so that you have a contrast and the little tab I cut it from white areas so it looks really pretty I didn't do a buttonhole I just fixed the button there I'm not going to be taking that off or doing anything like that so that's that I'm very happy with the way the bodice looks I think it's amazing I think it's a pattern I would like to keep making over and over it makes it extra beautiful with the fabric choice I'm so happy I paired this fabric to this specific pattern so happy with my fringe dress and also that it's got better sizing now from 0 to 30 it can work for a lot of people I think this type of bodice will look great on everyone so I'm very happy with this and especially with this fabric choice it's a very floaty dress very comfortable this rayon is amazing it looks like linen but it's not and yeah I'm just very happy Dance with me You should get 
I hope I don't come off as a pain or that I'm sort of like a hand basting snob or anything. I'm just sharing with you the actual things that I do for sewing that you probably won't see around in instructions or in videos and I'm telling you they really work and they just result in a beautiful garment. Very beautiful, I'm just so proud of how it looks in every single way and I love this pattern. I'm sure I want to sew it again. For sure with the facing to the reverse I think that would look really pretty and then the bodice is just amazing you can put different types of skirt hacks onto it so even though I've sewn it already I don't want to really stop sewing it I really like it I hope you enjoyed seeing all these sewing techniques I hope you think about them and maybe apply them to your own sewing I share them with you with all my love from my sewing room and I hope they work for you as well as they work for me I will see you again very soon with more sewing bye